on the edge of Greenland, in its capital city, there lies a one-web Earth station. 21 antennas populate one of the most remote corners of the planet and connect to the satellites that OneWeb has launched into low Earth orbit. At Nuke, we have a range of, of antennas and they're effectively protected under a dome to protect them from the ice and the elements. They are very large antennas. And they are spread on, all over the site. Quite impressive sight to, to, to see. Their role is really to, take the, to connect to the satellites that are bringing the traffic back from the user wherever they are. And Nuke is then connected to subsea cabling and to all the internet provider around, around the world to make sure that um, people are back in the grid. Nuke has been selected as a strategic location to deliver connectivity to the North Atlantic, Canada and the Arctic Circle, a feat never achieved before. Not only has this helped local communities, but it's opened up a world of opportunities for businesses and the scientific community who famously work in some of the world's most remote locations. The Arctic region is an indicator of the health of our planet, so it's very critical from a research perspective. And supporting scientists that are studying on site has been so far very, very difficult for them. They are very isolated, they can't send the data, can't get advice from other researchers, can even be dangerous when they are completely um, hours away from any uh, rescue or help. Jorn Peder Stefansson has spent his career conducting extensive expeditions on Greenland's ice sheet. His current project sees him drill down into the ice to gather important data concerning our planet's climate. Our primary purpose in the project is to drill an ice core, which is a long cylindrical piece of ice out of the ice cap in the middle of the Greenland ice sheet. We have techniques where we can separate summer ice from winter ice, and that means since we can distinguish between summer snow and winter snow, we can actually count layers just like you count tree rings. Once we have established the layer sequence, we know the age, and then we can ask a lot of questions like, what was the average temperature in the 17th century? So we can study the greenhouse gases during the whole span of human civilization. That's about the last 10,000 years. This new level of reliable connectivity has helped Jorn and his colleagues in their work. This is an international program. We have about 10 international partners in this. We stay connected through the internet. Otherwise, we cannot coordinate and it was uh, particularly important to us during the COVID crisis because we couldn't meet. I hate to think about what would have happened if this had happened in the 70s. We would have lost contact. We had to re-establish contacts. Now we can sort of soldier on. <laughs> Key to the success of this research is the team's ability to communicate in real time, to investigate problems and provide immediate solutions. Today with connectivity, it is like everybody, our colleagues all over the world can keep track on what we're doing in camp and they can deliver feedback. And that means we can correct the exposure, so to say, and we can do that on the fly because everybody is basically who, who's relevant will be watching us and helping us out. Everybody will, will grab with the chance of, um, of getting connected because everybody can see the benefits of that. Just to say no to it is it, that you're hampering yourself because it gives you possibilities. We are here with, on a mission, we have a purpose. Supporting the scientific community, um, whether in Greenland or elsewhere, is very much part of our ethos. We are also supporting vessels to become platform of opportunities and collect data on the sea uh, to, or, and, and monitor the health of our oceans. A lot of us working here are motivated by, by that mission to make a difference for the greater good, so effectively to deliver a, a better world.